keep caring, keep sharing. Galatians chapter 6, verses 6 to 10. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will, from the flesh, reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will, from the Spirit, reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. In his letter to the Galatians, the Apostle Paul has been explaining that as Christians, they are free now. And here, towards the end of the letter, he's instructing them in how to use that freedom. If we are Christians, then we are free now. And these instructions apply to us in how we should use that freedom. And the way we should use that freedom is summarised in the key verse, chapter 6, verse 2. Bear one another's burdens. Bear one another's burdens. Help each other out in the wisdom and power of the Holy Spirit. Each one has their own load to bear of helping others out. When we bear one another's burdens, then in this way we fulfil the law of Christ. So this theme of bearing one another's burdens continues in the verses that we've just read. Let's look at them more closely. Verse 6. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Who is this instruction aimed at? The one who is taught the word. The one. That means each and every person, each individual, That's you and I individually. As we are taught the word, there's something that we must do. What is it that we must do? We must share all good things with the one who teaches. To share means that I have something and I give some of it to you. What kind of things should I be sharing if you are teaching me in the word? I should be sharing all good things with you. This word good things includes both material and non-material things. On the material side, finances, food, clothing, and so forth. On the non-material side, encouragement, praying for that person. And if we're being instructed in the word, sharing with our teacher some of what we're seeing from the word through his instruction. As a teacher, it's always a blessing when someone that you're teaching shares with you some of the things that they're seeing and discovering through your teaching. Why should the one who's taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches, because it helps the teacher. In doing so, we are helping to bear his burdens. And of course, it helps you and I when we share all good things, because it's more blessed to give than to receive. Literally, the word share in the original language here means to come into communion, common union with So if you are receiving instruction in the word, come into communion with your teacher in these ways by sharing with him of your material resources and sharing with him of what you have to give in a non-material sense. Again, pray for him, encourage him and share with him some of what you're seeing. It will bless him and help him to carry his burden. You'll be bearing 
his burden and so fulfilling the law of Christ. The next verse, verse 7, continues this theme of bear one another's burdens. Let's look at it. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a person sows, that will he also reap. Do not be deceived. The word deceived means to be misled, led in the wrong direction. And it's the opposite to being led in the right direction. What's the best way to not be deceived, to not be misled? It's to be led by the Holy Spirit. If you are a Christian, you are a son of God. And Paul tells us in the letter to the Romans that all those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. It's part of your inheritance in Jesus Christ to be led by the Holy Spirit, day by day, hour by hour, moment by moment. And as you're led by the Holy Spirit, he will lead you into fulfilling the law of Christ. He will lead you to bear one another's burdens. And so you won't be misled. Here in verse 7, Paul goes on to say, God is not mocked. Whatever one sows, that will he also reap. God is not mocked. This literally means sneered at. We can picture someone turning their nose up at another person, arrogantly lifting their nose into the air and turning away to ignore them and walk away from them. That is what the word mocked here means in the original language. God cannot be proudly ignored because there are simple principles of who God is and how reality is constituted that can't be violated. And one of those principles we see here that whatever one sows, that will he also reap. God is a God of reality. And so what we sow into our or others' lives is what we will reap. What kind of sowing and reaping is being spoken about here? Well, what we're told is the one who sows to his flesh, his own flesh, will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. If you sow to the spirit, you will reap eternal life from the spirit. Whatever you plant in the ground, that's the thing that you're going to harvest. So let's look more closely at these kinds of sowing and reaping. The one who sows to the flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. The word flesh biblically means your human life, but not governed by God. In other words, life apart from God's government. If we're not governed, if we're not allowing ourselves to be governed by the Holy Spirit, then we are sowing to the flesh. And we can guarantee that when we're sowing to the flesh, we are not bearing one another's burdens. So what happens if we sow to the flesh, if we don't allow ourselves to be led moment by moment by the Holy Spirit? Then from that same flesh, we reap corruption. The word corruption here literally means decay. Something begins to die in our lives. It also means ruin. If we carry on that path, something is ruined in our lives. If we are sowing to the flesh, if we're not allowing ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit, if we're not bearing one another's burdens, then our life begins to decay. Where does that decay and corruption come from? From the flesh. In other words, that corruption starts in ourself and radiates outward into our lives and into our relationships. Again, God is not mocked. It's impossible to proudly ignore God and in that sense to proudly ignore reality. What we sow, we reap. If we sow to our own flesh, from our own flesh we reap corruption. But, says Paul, on the other side of the equation, the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. 
That's the alternative to sowing to the flesh, sowing to the spirit. What does it mean to sow to the spirit? It means to be governed by the Holy Spirit. If we're being governed by the Holy Spirit, we will bear one another's burdens. What do we reap if we sow to the Spirit? From the Spirit we reap eternal life. There's two words in Greek for life. One of them is bios, the other is zoe. Every human being has bios. That's basic human life. What makes us breathe and sleep and walk and eat. It's the word that we get words such as biology from. But zoe life is something more. It's the life of God. It's a human life that is filled with God and therefore a human life that is lived to the full. That's zoe life. That's the life being described here. And it's eternal zoe life. It's everlasting. It's never ending. So if we sow to the Spirit, then from the Spirit we will reap never-ending fullness of life, our human life filled with God. Now there's something more we can say about this eternal life and what it is. In John chapter 17, verse 3, Jesus himself speaks about what eternal life is. He says that it's to know God and Jesus Christ whom he sent. To know God, to know Jesus that's eternal life. And this kind of knowing, this kind of knowledge, again, going back to the Greek word that Jesus is quoted as using there, means to know someone through experience and over time in a growing relationship. So that's eternal life. Your life filled with God and therefore lived to the full forever. And within that life, you are getting to know God and Jesus, not just theoretically, but through experience, getting to know him better and better. So if we bring these truths together, when we sow to the spirit, then from the spirit, we reap eternal life. When we sow to the spirit, we will be bearing one another's burdens in the Holy Spirit. And so we will know God and we'll know Jesus through the Holy Spirit. It makes sense, doesn't it? The way that God is, and the way that God has made us, is to love, is to bear one another's burdens. So when we do that, of course we're coming to know God better. Of course our lives are full and free and vibrant. What we sow is always going to be what we reap. Moving on to verse nine, the Apostle Paul gives us further instruction connected to this theme of bearing one another's burdens. And this instruction is addressed to us. Let us not grow weary of doing good. In other words, it applies to us all. He's emphasizing here that this is a team effort. Doing good is a team effort. What is the instruction? Do not grow weary in doing good. To grow weary here means to lose courage, to begin to faint. To begin to lose courage and faint in doing good, in sowing to the spirit, in bearing one another's burdens. To do good, literally the word good here means things that are precious, noble, beautiful, honourable, things that comfort and encourage and strengthen others. Let's not grow weary, lose courage, begin to faint in doing good. Perhaps there's a situation in which you have been helping someone else in the wisdom and power of the Holy Spirit for some time, but that person isn't receiving it the way that they should. They're not responding the way that you wish that they would and you're beginning to become weary, beginning to lose courage in that situation, in that doing good, in that relationship. And so the temptation is to begin to give up. Let us not grow weary of doing good. Why should we not grow weary of doing good? For in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. 
What is it that we will reap if we don't give up? Eternal life, for the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. But when will we reap this eternal life? In due season. As with any form of planting and harvesting or reaping, there's a period of time between when you plant that seed in the ground and when you can reap the harvest. There's a proper time for both sowing and reaping. As we sow to the Spirit and bear one another's burdens, the reaping of our reward, if you like, of eternal life is not fully immediate. It's at the proper time. So bear that in mind. And there's a condition to being able to reap this harvest of eternal life. And Paul has explained that condition here in verse 9. If we do not give up. Literally, this means if we don't let our strength of heart and mind be relaxed and dissolved. Again, maybe you've been reaching out and helping someone in the Holy Spirit and it's been over a period of time and they're not responding how you know that ultimately they should and you're beginning to be tempted to give up, to relax the strength that you've been applying, that strength of mind, that strength of heart to help that person. Remember, if you don't give up, you will reap eternal life in due season. If we continue to be led by the Holy Spirit, we will not give up because the Holy Spirit is not a spirit that gives up. This temptation to give up in doing good can apply in big situations or small ones. It can apply in relationships that have been going on for some time where we've been reaching out to love someone, or it can apply in moment-by-moment interactions where we're just tempted to give up in applying that strength that comes from God in helping another person. Even in a particular conversation, we might be talking with someone and the conversation is, is trying and difficult and we're trying to help, again, in the wisdom and power of the Holy Spirit but it's becoming discouraging, the response we're getting or not getting. And that temptation can be to relax our strength of mind, our strength of heart, to let it dissolve and to give up, pressing in for the highest good in that moment and in that time. Let's not do that because we will reap eternal life in due course if we don't give up. It's a very, very strong and common temptation and tendency to grow weary of doing good and to be tempted to give up, especially in our day and age when evil has become more prevalent and more pronounced and more obvious. In fact, this weariness has been weaponized by the enemy in order to try to prevent and stop God's people from doing the good that we're on this earth to do. The prophet Daniel prophesied this in Daniel chapter 8, verse 25, when he records that in the last days, the enemy of God will seek to wear out the saints of the Most High through the words that it speaks, seek to bring that weariness, which of course would then, in the mind of the enemy, ideally lead to us giving up in bearing one another's burdens and in fulfilling the law of Christ. So let's not give the enemy that pleasure of succeeding in that goal. Before we move on to look at Paul's final instruction in verse 10, let me add that when we speak about God not being mocked, that what we sow is what we reap, it's important to remember that sometimes that mocking comes from the enemy, from the devil. He mocks God by mocking us in telling us that what we're doing in the Holy Spirit is not actually effective, is not actually all that important or good. Remember, God is not mocked. If we are sowing to the Spirit, if we're being led by the Holy Spirit, then what we're doing is sowing a harvest of righteousness that will be reaped in due course. We will reap that eternal life. So we can close our ears to that mocking from the devil and set all our energies and attention into continuing to do the good that the Holy Spirit places in our hearts. And then also, 
when we are told that the one who sows to the flesh reaps corruption from the flesh and the one who sows to the spirit reaps eternal life from the spirit. This indicates that this sowing to the spirit and this reaping of eternal life is this, is the normal state that we're supposed to be in because the corruption of something is taking it away from its normal proper state. So our normal life Our normal life in God is that we are led by the Spirit, that we're sowing to the Spirit, that we're bearing one another's burdens and that we're reaping eternal life. This is the normal life that we've been released unto in Jesus Christ. And because it's from the Spirit that we reap eternal life, we can be sure that the Holy Spirit will ensure that as we continue to sow and we don't give up, we will reap eternal life. That wonderful growing knowledge of God in Jesus Christ, that wonderful human life that's filled with God and is therefore a full human life. Let's go on now to the final instruction that Paul gives us in verse 10. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So what's the instruction that we're given here? Let us do good. This is an action. It's an activity, not just a theory. And to do good means to do what benefits, what genuinely benefits others. How will we know what will genuinely benefit others? By being led by the Holy Spirit, by relying on his wisdom and his power. That's how we'll know what will benefit others, and that's how we'll be able to do it. Who should we do good to? To everyone. That's it. Do good to everyone. And especially, most of all, above all, those who are of the household of faith. In other words, those who are in God's family those who are putting their trust in God and in his goodness and seeking to follow him. When should we do this good? As we have opportunity. This literally means in appropriate moments at the appropriate times. It's impossible to do everything that everyone else needs all the time. You and I are individual people. Each of us, if we're Christians, graced with the presence of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and lives, enabling us through his wisdom and power to do the good that he wants us individually, personally to do as part of his wider family. So we will recognise the opportunities that we have to do good as we are led by the Holy Spirit. Let's be alert to those opportunities. Let's make sure that we use those opportunities and always, always on the foundation of being led and governed by the Holy Spirit. So to sum up, Paul has been illustrating and giving us more instruction in how to bear one another's burdens in the Holy Spirit and so to fulfil the law of Christ. So far in chapter 6, he's given us two specific examples of how we can bear one another's burdens. In the first example, which we looked at in the last talk, it was to help restore those Christians who've become wayward. And in this talk, it's the example of sharing all good things with the one who teaches us in the word of God. Of course, there's many, many, many other examples of how we can bear one another's burdens in the Holy Spirit. So let's keep caring and let's keep sharing. Let's read one more time through the passage. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will, from the flesh, reap corruption. 
But the one who sows to the Spirit will, from the Spirit, reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you that by the gift of the indwelling Holy Spirit, you have enabled us, you empower us, and you give us the wisdom to be able to fulfill the law of Christ by bearing one another's burdens, by doing good as we have opportunity to everyone, and especially those who are of the household of faith. Lord God, may the words that we've read and considered together come alive in our lives. May we live out what you've spoken in. In Jesus' name. Amen. Until next time, God bless.